three, two, one. This is episode 29 of DJ Talks. My name is Johnny. Hey, I'm Dan. <laughs> and welcome back. We are in the middle of February or January now. Um, I was looking at our channel, Dan, and we have like a solid 38 subscribers. And we're averaging like 10 to 15-ish views <laughs> per video. So I actually think that those ratios are like pretty good. Um, it means that like we have a decent amount of people watching. I actually haven't looked at our analytics. So I don't know like how many people are watching it the whole way through. Mm -hmm. But um, I know we have a couple of people. Um, so of commenting on our last week episode on our top three favorite Disney movies, uh, Kevin said that he his top three are Frozen, Big Hero 6, and Mulan in that order. But honorable mention to Aladdin and The Little Mermaid for having good soundtracks. Um, I know you and I, Dan, I think between both of us, we mentioned all those movies except for Frozen, right? I don't think either of us talked about Frozen. <laughs> um, we we dissed on Frozen a little bit. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> we, we said like the soundtrack is overrated or some shit, right? Yeah, uh, well, I like the soundtrack. I, it, was I was very, the one. it was just very shoved in your face, that's all. That's, yeah, that's pretty much yeah. it, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I was probably the one that was shitting on it, so like, we'll blame me, not you. Um, but, I mean, that was a fun episode. I'm actually really excited about this episode um, because we're going to be talking about the history of Nintendo consoles, not handhelds. We're dedicating the time to consoles because we actually think there's a lot to talk about. Um, Dan and I are both pretty big Nintendo fans, so it'll be fun mm. to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to kind of go through each console offer some interesting facts and it will talk about why we think they're successful or unsuccessful um i mean you guys already probably know if you're familiar with nintendo like the wii u was garbage the wii was like really fucking good um and we want to talk a That's little what bit people about think actually really <laughs> yeah we'll talk about that more though we'll uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll talk about it later yeah. but i'm gonna pass it off to you dan let's, let's give him the rundown all right so uh, we did a bunch of research when it comes to kind of the basic facts around Nintendo overall. Um, and we're going to be talking about more so the home consoles rather than the extra little one-offs here or there that Nintendo had. Like the original... Um, color TV, was it? Color TV, I don't yeah, even know. Japanese the only thing. Nintendo has been around for a while, so they've had a whole bunch of hiccups here or there. They've also had some... Good consoles, some bad consoles. We'll yeah. go through them little by little here. Now, um, I guess first off, we'll start off with the first Nintendo system that came over. Um, not including, obviously, the huge arcade games that you, you may see, like Donkey Kong. Whatever that, mm -hmm. Jumpman or something? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the first one is Nintendo Entertainment System, which is called the NES came out in October 18th, 1983. Now, Nintendo initially actually, um, in Japan, created what's called the Famico. I don't know if you have heard of that. That was actually the Japan version of the NES. But they mm -hmm. rebranded, uh, they, they obviously brought it over to the US. This was actually, um, interesting fact about this, during the time that, um, Video games actually became a huge controversy because there were so many games. It was more quantity over quality at that point in time. What do you mean? Were there like too many uh, people like trying to get into the video game industry? Yeah, so a lot of developers threw out these games because they may think it's either just easy to sell. Um, mm -hmm. It was Atari and the huge oh. um, video game kind of uh, arcade system world game. You know, um, and there were just a lot of failures when it came to game making. So it was a huge risk on Nintendo's part to actually bring it over to the U.S. So, um, but Nintendo has been, uh, the NES has been actually one of the more popular ones, especially since it was the first off the very first one. Some of the notable mentions of games when it came to the Nintendo was Super Mario Bros, um, hmm. Duck Hunt, um, Legend of Zelda. These were the first time that Nintendo actually brought these characters really out and fully. Was this the Zelda game <laughs> where they're like, it's dangerous to go alone and take this? Or is that a different game? I think that was the one. The, okay. It was like the 8 bit or something yeah. game where you can. It's like a 2D little version, but. Uh huh. Yeah. And then they also created Tetris here. Maybe not created, but. 
one of the first time Tetris was also very big. So some of the very notable games throughout the um, history of Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, you haven't had too much experience with Nintendo Entertainment well, System before. Yeah, I, I never really played on the NES. Like, I've played Super Mario Bros. Mm -hmm. 3, which is, like, one of the be their better-selling titles, but um, obviously I've played Tetris, but I, I've never actually owned an NES. I've never... I don't, I don't have any recollection of playing on a friend's NES. Um, so I, I, like, know very little about it, and I... <laughs> it's okay. Not yeah. many people actually own it. I was actually very That's surprised. True. One of my friends owned it and that's the initial time ever um that's the very first time i've ever played it but you have this now i think on virtual console as well so mm -hmm. you can get some of the games if you were interested on your computer virtual console whatever it is get the roms um but they don't they have the nes um they remade it into the smaller version or just like the snes oh yeah version? yeah, yeah. So they released the NES Classic, which I think like it was a great idea, but they had such little quantity that like scalpers went up the roof for like trying to uh, sell it. It's just, which is really annoying because I actually really wanted one just because I never played those games before. Mm -hmm. um, let me just do a quick uh, search on Amazon to see. Yeah, right now if you wanted to buy one, it's one hundred and twenty dollars, which isn't. Oh no, that's the SNES. I'm sorry, that's the SNES Classic. Mm -hmm. The NES Classic. On Amazon is two hundred and ten dollars right now, which sucks because it retailed for sixty or eighty dollars, and it's like it's just unfortunate that you have a ton of people that just bought it because they just want to resell it and they know the value of this thing. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's like it was a great idea. I just wish Nintendo would just make more. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was this little cartridge. I, I, I can't even... I, it was like this gray little box cartridge that you shoved in, and it kind of had this weird little shove-in. I, it was a very interesting system overall. But at that time, in 1983, that was one of the more most popular because it really didn't have any other competition outside of the arcade games um, when you went to the arcade. So there weren't yeah. any very popular home console systems so nintendo really got to jump on that as well and i thought that's super cool and nintendo has been around since then so yeah very popular at least in the u.s as well so what kind of memories do you have of playing on the nes like do you remember any games or stories that you want to share you know i had like like i said i was with my friend this was when i was like five or six but um he had this, and he got... I didn't play this until after SNES came out, which we'll talk about afterwards as well. Um, so at that point, I didn't really have two great fond memories because SNES was already out, and we already had the better graphics and better system. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, no, I mean, they still have the classics. I just remember playing Super Mario Bros., and I still remember playing it. This is where you could actually go... World to world, um, it's like world 1-1, one -one, world 1-2, one and you went through the game, and you could skip levels because of one level. I, I don't know. There's secret oh, oh, wait, pipe. I know what you're talking about. There's like a secret war pipe or something that takes you to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was this one. Man, I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah. I just know that it had some good games... Super Mario Bros. was the only one that I ever really got into, um, very into. Duck Hunt was one of the other popular games here, and they sold other accessories pretty much. I don't know if you remember about this, which was the little point and shoot gun mm -hmm. that you can point and actually sh it, duck hunt you hunting for a duck. So, um, I think that was super popular because it was not just the console, not just the um, controller, but also a separate device as well that you can kind of connect like the Wii U or I mean like the Wii. <laughs> so, yeah, um, all the little external accessories were super cool. Mm. Um, but that moves us into more, uh, the Super Nintendo which was the second version, almost, of the Nintendo Entertainment System. It's 
It's called the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. It was just an, uh, a pure upgrade to the Nintendo. Um, came so what out. was different about it? It was just you said it was an upgrade, right? Yeah, I mean, the, like better graphics, better um, better looking console, mm-hmm. more sleek. The controllers just worked better mm-hmm. and looked better. And um, the Nintendo Entertainment, the original one, was this square, rectangular console, as well rectangular controller. It just right. looked very blocky, very old looking. Whereas Nintendo, uh, the Super Nintendo, had this new kind of cylindrical almost controller, almost resembling, uh, more so resembling today's, or I guess not today's controllers, but a more controller looking controller. I guess you, mm-hmm. when you yeah. picture a controller, that's what you kind of think. So, mm-hmm. but it came out November twenty first, nineteen ninety one. Um, some obviously top notable games that you all ha- if you ever have heard of them super mario world donkey kong country uh super mario kart came out during this time as well um mm-hmm. and then obviously legend of zelda was, was still part of them right so with this console um for me i have very good memories of it but this was actually at the same time uh they competed with Sega Genesis. So Sega also had their console. I actually have a Sega Genesis. My parents bought me the Sega. Wow, that's pretty cool. Rather than the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, Whereas my friend had the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. So I'm just going to shorten that to the SNES. Yeah, you should. I don't want (laughs) to say that every time. Um, So personally, I actually played more of the Sega. um, Mm. But I still have very good memories of this. Not only because... I played with my friend, but I also played on the virtual console, and I played through a lot of these games as well, like the Super Mario Kart, where I'm, and I think still a lot of um, speedrunners run through some of these games. Mm-hmm. Now, you, I have heard, also currently now have the new... <laughs> I got really lucky to have this thing, the SNES Classic, because... A friend of mine, uh, his girlfriend pre-ordered it. I mean, she's also my friend. So technically, my, a friend of mine bought it for her boyfriend, <laughs> pre-ordered it. But he already got it. Mm-hmm. So then she was like, who the fuck wants this? And I'm like, I fucking want it. So I got it off her. She hooked me up. It was dope. Uh, so, you I, haven't I actually haven't yet, played it yet. But, no. Okay. Um, but I, I will. I mean, I've never played Super Mario World. And I know that, like, Dan, you're a big fan of the game. So I, sh- I, I really want to try it. Um. Also, what's really cool about this uh, specific console is that Star Fox 2 was never released, but it's on this console, so mm-hmm. um, I want to play that too. Star Fox is Hell yeah, cool. definitely. Yeah. Um, no, but Super Mario World was one of the, actually the best-selling uh, games of this system. Mm-hmm. It's the classic Mario look. This is the classic Mario look that you still know and love today, where... It's that, you know, plumber looking guy, hat, red, red color, blue, je- like overall jeans. No, just like the good old mm-hmm. classic. Um, obviously, you had earlier versions of Mario, but this was when it really started, I think. Mm-hmm. At least in my opinion, that's when the actual classic model of Mario came out. So, But what about the original like Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, and 3? Yeah. I would say like those are like pretty classic too, where like you imagine the original <laughs> Mario like side scroller and like super mushrooms and shit. That's kind of what I associate more with the classic Mario. But then again, I've never played Super Mario. World. I also know that um, what's it called games like uh, Super Mario sixty four and Super Mario Sunshine were like inspired by Super Mario World. Is that true? That I have no clue. Mm-hmm. But they, I think they look pretty similar. Let's see, Super Mario World versus um. I mean, if you take a look at the Super Mario World uh, when you actually play the game, this is... Let me see here. You might even put up an image somewhere, or at least a link below, or you can Google it yourself. Um, but yeah, it I mean, I feel classic. like this reminds me a lot more of, uh, like, the original... It's more reminiscent of the original Super Mario Bros, mm-hmm. but this is, like... I mean, it's just so modern and cartoony that it looks really cool, so... Yeah. Um, personally, I didn't own... 
a lot of these Nintendo systems, but I've played with friends. I think that's a huge thing. It's a home entertainment system where you can play with your friends. That was the mm-hmm. good classic days where you could play two-player games or yeah. um, play together, living room, still the same Nintendo-style system almost. Mm-hmm. Um, but next after that came the N64, which so many people nowadays know. Yeah. It actually probably wasn't super popular, especially not one of the popular, most popular ones, but nowadays speed runners people who like the classic games that people still run today um came from the n64 as well uh came out in on june 23rd 1996 a day before my birthday (laughs) 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 but yeah you know i i wish i got this but not at the time um at that time it competed out with super uh, sorry, Sega Dreamcast, as well as PlayStation, which came around this around the same time. I'm not going to say it's at the same time, but around the same time. Obviously, you guys have heard Sega Dreamcast did not do the best. Sega not so not around so much anymore. But, well, um, they're not around in like the console world. They're mm-hmm. huge oh, yeah. in the arcade world in Tokyo. Like one of my favorite rhythm games is exclusive to Sega. In Sega arcades, I think, which sucks because I love that game, and like I don't know if we're ever gonna see it in America. Um, I always thought the name like Sega Dreamcast was like really cool too. I I like being someone that didn't play on the NES and SNES or ever owning them. I always actually mixed up like Sega Genesis, Sega Dreamcast with like the NES and SNES. I thought there was like some interchangeability between them, uh. um, which really confused me. Um, just because like I didn't know any better. I mean. <sighs> I saw the Dreamcast. It just looked so weird. The mm-hmm. controller looked gigantic, huge. Same with the N64, I guess. This was a time with con- when controllers looked all weird and sl- sloppy. But mm-hmm. N64, one of the huge things about uh, this controller was it changed it completely where you had... It almost looked like a three-pronged controller. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it had... It's movement controls completely separate. I mean, it's D-pad completely separate. You don't even know which way to use it. You can use it in the middle. You can use it on the sides. If you actually take a look at the controller, in my opinion, it was not the best yeah. for me. You know, it just looks so <laughs> weird. And like, if holding it always felt kind of weird too, because like most of the time, your right hand would be in the middle prong, mm-hmm. and your or left your left hand would be in the middle prong. Your right hand would be like where the buttons were. So you have to kind of get used to that, and you're wondering, like, I mean, I know that there was, like, that Rumble Pack thing that you could plug into, like, memory cards, but, like, that was also, like, super weird, and it just felt really clunky, mm-hmm. and then, like, you'll almost never use, like, the far right part of the controller, or far left part of the controller, so yeah. it's just, like, what exactly is going on with it? Um, you know, put it together so I don't have to, like, switch grips, you know, it's weird. Yeah, but they, they created some innovation, like, they tried different things with their... If you see actually the um, progression for controllers from every single PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, Nintendo has the widest variety of controllers you see <laughs> ever. Mm-hmm. They, they, the difference, I think, and we'll talk about this later as well, Nintendo innovated completely differently than PlayStation and Xbox and what the normal was. They tried to do something completely outside of the box um versus all the other consoles so right i thought that's super i think that's super cool with what nintendo does but some of the notable games for nintendo 64 um super mario 64 super classic speed running game yeah right there super mario 64 is dope this <laughs> is the open world one where you're like go like i remember you would go into a castle with a bunch of like weird looking like photos yeah. frames like you would go to where like you were able to spin jump or like triple jump and stuff. I loved this game. I never owned an N64, but I was able to play that game. Um, this game was fucking dope, man. I I had so much fun with it. And I know for a fact that Super Mario Sunshine and Super Mario Odyssey had inspiration from uh, Super Mario 64 and mm-hmm. how like the mechanics worked, uh, what it'd be like to go from world to world, how weird different worlds were, things like that. I know that it was very much inspired by that. Um, so. I, I I really enjoyed playing that game for like the brief time that I ever got to play it. Yeah, I mean, if you still ever want to, it's still, I think it's still super hard. 
<laughs> I oh, still yeah, don't yeah, understand yeah. how people really hard, like, yeah. navigate so easily. All the glitches, everything. They practice nonstop, but yeah, it was still a super hard game. But definitely the open world style. Um, super Mario, Sunshine, and Galaxy for sure had inspiration from this uh, initial game too. Mm-hmm. Um, don't they have one coming out now too? For the Switch? That, that's what I referenced earlier. Uh, Odyssey. Did I say Galaxy? Oh. Um, oh, shit. Maybe yeah. I thought Galaxy in my head. No, yeah, you were probably thinking Galaxy. I was talking about <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey, which is the one where like Mario like, throws his hat and like takes control of shit. But yeah, it, it's also <laughs> got that like open world feel that has a lot of those like Super Mario 64 mm-hmm. slash Super Mario Sunshine mechanic. Mm-hmm. Move to different yeah. worlds as well through a different exactly, through a yeah. huge... Okay. Um, and then... Mario Kart 64 came out at this time as well, and also Golden, a super dope game, super good game as well. Uh, GoldenEye 007. People have mm-hmm. so many fond memories of this game. I don't remember too much about it. <laughs> so it- I remember as a kid, I my friend showed me Ocarina of Time uh, okay. on a 64, and I'm like, this is fucking dope. Holy shit! I'm like this little green kid with a sword, and I'm running around like doing really cool shit. At the time, I was really big into like. That kind of fantasy gaming, uh, where like you'd have like a sword. Sh- like I was bi- really big on RuneScape, so like the whole like sword shield fighting warrior type of style felt really cool. And playing Ocarina of Time felt awesome. And he showed me Goldeneye, and I'm like, what "The fuck's this shit? I'm some white guy shooting people. Fuck this. Put Mar- Zelda back on." <laughs> so like you, I don't have a lot of fond memories of Goldeneye, but I know that it's something that a lot of people respect and love. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's because of the Golden uh, um, James Bond era. Maybe that's mm-hmm. why. Hi, yeah. I don't know. I didn't play it too much, so. Um, and then Super Smash Bros. <clears throat> Holy. So, woo! This was yeah. the first Super Smash Bros. Obviously, you have to do well when you pull in so many popular Nintendo characters and put it in one game to fight mm-hmm. it out and duke it out for the victory. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I just remember I had another friend as well. Um, the only time I ever went over was to play this game. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry to that friend, but I don't even know. My parents <laughs> and her, their parents, maybe they are always new, but every time I did mm-hmm. go over, we played the sma- uh, Smash. So, Yeah. Good the Smash was dope. I remember Pikachu was like OP in this one, right? I think Pikachu's always OP. Come on. That's not true. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> I almost want to say that, like in this version of the game, uh, Pikachu is like considered meta. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Pikachu is uh, considered S tier. Um, <clears throat> so I thought that was cool. <laughs> it was because it's quick attack or the little blinking move. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, Nintendo sixty four did uh, not the best as well. But we'll we'll go through that as well after that. Nintendo GameCube came out oh. September 14th, 2001. Yep. This was this was my first console um, for Nintendo. Same. This was my very uh, purchased console from mm. Nintendo. Um, so this at least came around the time when Xbox and PS2 came out as well. <laughs> PS2 yeah. obviously was the more popular one. Yeah. Um, but some notable games on here still to this day as well. Super Smash Bro Melee. Competitive scene is oh, still yeah. going on. Obviously, they have Project M as well to get all the characters. But Super Smash Bro Melee, people still play. People still learning. People still dodging left and right here, there. <laughs> Professional mm. scene. So I think that's super cool. As well as the GameCube look. Right, The GameCube look was the cube-shaped exactly how you think of it cube shaped console with a little handle, with a handle on the back yeah that was cool man hey you i can mean take like, it around practice, with you <laughs> it's not that like useful but like yeah you could just carry it like why the fuck would you walk around the console like that i don't know but like it makes i don't know it makes sense for like portability like, bring it to a friend's house what are you talking about you carry a backpack on your back i mean a tv on your back pull the console hold it in your hand <laughs> controller in the other hand walk around hey you Let's battle. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're totally right, dude. Uh, Melee was awesome. I'm actually really upset because I can't find my copy at home. But like, I remember I had to go through like all those special missions to unlock every character and do everything. I would like, 
go to the library, print out like all the achievements and all the things that you could do and like how you would get them. And then I would come home and I play and I try to like unlock everything. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of really fun memories of Melee. It, it, I think it's awesome. Yeah, I think I lost my copy too. Unfortunate. Yeah, I bet so that would be, sad. that's like 30 bucks now or something. I don't know. Um, I, I, when, when Melee was exploding uh, in, in the competitive FGC's uh, scene, um, it was pretty hard to find like a really good copy of Melee without mm -hmm. having to pay like 50 or 60 bucks. It might be cheaper now, but um, I I would definitely buy one if it was like 20, 30 bucks. Like that's that's easy money. The controller oh. too. Oh, I love, love the, the game controller. controller, dude. I love the game. I still think it, like it's still one of my favorite controllers of all time, if not my favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just feels good. It feels mm -hmm. good. Uh, other little notable games, obviously Mario Kart Double Dash was at this time. Hell yeah. um, Super Mario Sunshine, one of your favorite games i remember mm -hmm. um wind waker also one of your so it's funny because like, dan is listing like a bunch of games that we or he researched i did doing research so all the credit goes to him of like the best-selling games for game keep the top 10 i played all of these games <laughs> i i could tell you all the stories i could tell you like what my favorite parts were for each game i own all of them too so oh man this is looking at this list brings back a lot of memories man there we go there we go <laughs> but Nintendo GameCube, good classic, good home game system, good play with your friends, Mario Kart, uh, Mario Party. Uh, Mario Party 4 was dope, man. That's still the best Mario Party game in my opinion. I don't know. I mean, whew, N64 has some good uh, Mario Party games. Yeah, I heard that Mario Party like 2 and 3 are like super popular, but Mario Party 4 has a place in my heart, man. It's just too good. <laughs> yeah, they just had a good home play with your friend games you know mm -hmm. let's fight and compete and see who's the best pretty yeah much. Uh, yeah i mean like metroid prime is the title that uh was on his top 10 and it, it just sucks that like we haven't heard about a metroid prime 4 in so long but um i know that there was a press release where they talked about how there is going to be a next metroid prime game on the switch um <clears throat> which i'm absolutely like in love with and i'm really excited about um I think there was one on the Wii. There was Metroid Prime Three on the Wii. Okay, yeah, and yeah. then they also came out with one on the uh, with the the handheld the, for. Uh, so the what they did was they had DS. Metroid Prime One and Two on the GameCube. Then they came out with Three on the Wii, and then what they actually did was they ported One and Two onto the Wii as well. So there's like the special edition version of the game that I bought. Like it's in a, like a really cool aluminum steel back case, and it comes with every game playable on the Wii, so like when you're running around like, like you're shooting your laser um you can like use a wiimote which is really cool mm -hmm. um and then there was samus Ret metro prime samus returns but that was like i don't say it was a spin-off uh <laughs> technically it is um but that is available on the 3ds but uh we are gonna see uh hopefully what we presume to be metro prime 4 on the switch all right we'll get there Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's really exciting. <laughs> I, I really hope that we see it. And I just want to say, I know we're going to talk about it later, but I I feel like a really big selling point for the Switch would be if they eventually ported all these games over to the Switch, like a virtual console sort of thing. I know that a lot of people were on board with that idea. Yeah. I don't know what that would imply for Nintendo because like that would mean that maybe the newer versions of these kinds of games wouldn't necessarily sell as well. Um, I mean, just the idea of, like, why would you ever buy a new Mario Party game if you could play, like, the original Mario Parties? Um, why would you, you know, buy... Why would you have bought Super Mario Odyssey if Super Mario Sunshine was filled? Or something like that. I don't know. Um, but, like, there are just so many, like, super noteworthy titles from Nintendo from the GameCube mm -hmm. that I really hope that they do to a virtual console in the future. Like, that's just, like, what my... This is, like, my inner desire. I really hope that they did that with the Wii or Wii U, but they never really did. Um, so... We'll, we'll see what happens. I know that the technology is there. I just don't know if Nintendo actually wants to do it. I mean, they do it for the handhelds. Like, they, they pop in Game Boy, uh, Game Boy original games over to the 3DS. They pop over yeah. advanced games to the 3DS. But, you know, I mean, it's possible to do. It has to it's be possible. It's possible, for right? sure, yeah. They, they have done it. So And it mm -hmm. hasn't affected their sales because Pokemon Red was ported over or something, or Gold was ported over to the 3DS. No. I mean, people yeah. want the newer version because because there's new things. There's new new content, so it's like yeah. a DLC to the original. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I know that Sonic Adventure 2 Battle was like, that's not like a Nintendo license only, but like that's on that's on Steam. That's really cool too. Uh, Wind Waker was actually ported into the Wii U in HD, which we'll talk about later. But like that would that would be cool to have. I would fucking love to play Wind Waker on the Switch. You know, like that sounds so dope. Um, but I mean, you have the better version already. <laughs> yeah, but the Wii U sucks. But we'll talk about that later. So um, <laughs> after that came the Nintendo Wii. Came out Hell in yeah. November 19th, 2006. This was the top seller of Nintendo. This was, brought it back into contention, I guess, with the motion control controllers, uh, where you can point. It's a um, complete separate controller. Uh, you had accessories to attach to the controller as well. You had the nunchucks. You had, um, I don't, I, they had, like, the, for Mario Kart, you could actually connect the controller into this wheel-looking uh, um, controller, so you can almost make it feel like you're driving, mm-hmm. which never really actually felt like driving, because I still crashed more often than not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, I mean, you just had so much new innovation when it came to the Wii. Uh, mm-hmm. This actually competed at that time with the Xbox 360 and the PS3, uh, give or take a couple of years here or there. <clears throat> and if you guys don't know, one of the obviously most popular games for the Wii is Wii Sports. The yeah. thing that came with pretty much every Wii, you had to buy it. Just the innovation, the difference, the feel that you could play with your friends, your family, in your living room, swinging your arms around and actually getting some exercise or something. <laughs> yeah. uh, the best seller for Nintendo. I mean, I, I think that the Wii Sports was like amazing at the time. You know, there were no other games in a market that offered that kind of experience. Mm-hmm. And even though I personally didn't have like too many hours on that game my siblings and i were always bigger fans like the mario games uh zelda games things like that like wii sports was fucking like innovational dude one of my um one of the test chapters that i work with ran a wii sports tournament as one of like the earlier competitive events and like it was super successful <laughs> like even now fucking at the time i gotta say like 11 years later this is like you know fall semester of 2017 they were still they still had a decent turnout to like for an eleven year old game on eleven year old console. Like mm-hmm. that's amazing. Uh so I completely agree. Like it kinda caught me off guard at first as to like Wii Sports being the best selling title. Uh but it makes sense. And um I think it's awesome that uh you know, it tells you just how innovation innovative the console was. And just look at the top ten list. Half of the, more than half of them are fucking Wii Sports type games, you know, yeah, Wii Sports, <laughs> yeah, Wii Sports Resort, we play, we fit, we fit, plus, and a Wii party. Like, I own Wii Fit too. Like, my family would fucking love that. Like, we would work out on that together for a while. And we, like, we would take turns doing exercise with each other. I had friends come over, we'd do exercises with each other and stuff. Like, I actually thought about it for the past couple weeks, like, bringing out my fucking Wii Fit, like, you know, uh, that, that stupid mat thing again, like, trying it out again, um, just because of, like, how cool it was. So, I mean, it just tells you like how creative Nintendo really got and where they took gaming, mm-hmm. as opposed to at the time the PS3 and the Xbox 360 were just like pumping like we need stronger graphics, we need like 1080p, and we need like gorgeous games and like super intense soundtracks and stuff. And like the Wii was like, here's a controller you can like wave around, and, like <laughs> go do shit with it. <laughs> how can we make kids move? That's yeah, that's pretty much it. How how can we get fat kids out of their seats? Come on. <laughs> yeah, and I think that, like, a really big thing with Nintendo is that they wanted to create, like, a wholesome experience that, like, anyone could participate in, as opposed to, like, what you would get with the PS3 or Xbox 360, where, like, you would still have games that are uh, more interactive, like, mm-hmm. I would say Call of Duty is, like, a really good example of that, or Halo, where you could like, play with other players, and you could like, you know, play on a team with them, or, like, fuck other people up. Um, but the Wii was tailored more to, like, in a fucking living room with your family, we should all get together and play something, like fucking jimmy the six years old or like mom and dad you know they're much older oh like my gosh. Have you, themselves right have you taken a look at the commercials back then? Woo! all the commercials for every single console just look absolutely weird everyone i'm telling you now youtube some of this stuff it is almost cringeworthy but it, it, it's like 
<laughs> it's just what people do to market, man. But I mean, I I still really respect the Wii as a console. Like, I take care of like the original one that my parents bought for my family, and I like to the best of my ability. Like as a kid, I beat that shit up, but um, it, it still has a very special place in my heart. Like, this game was dope. Or this console was dope, rather. Definitely. Um, then, from the success of the Wii, Nintendo got too cocky. They were too 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 proud of themselves. You think they got cocky? I think they just like straight up fucked up. <laughs> they were like, they were you like, know what? Just... We 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 just own the market. You know, let's take a seat back. Let's just pop out this shitty ass controller here. 2012, November 18, 2012 came the Wii U. This was the worst selling. <laughs> I guess Nintendo Switch is the worst selling right now because you know, but it just came out, but but you and I both know that anyone <laughs> with a brain realizes that this is going to take off. But anyway, yes, the Wii U um, competed at that time with the PS4, <laughs> competed with the Xbox One. Yeah, um, the worst selling Wii U or con- a console, home console for the Nintendo. <clears throat> the old, most popular games: Mario Kart Eight. Other games like Super Mario 3D World, they had their Super Mario Maker, they did crap ton of Mario games, yeah. um, and then obviously Johnny mentioned the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD came back, um, but mm. you own the console. I do. I didn't. Oh man. I don't, so- I don't know too much more about it. Go ahead. I, I could tell a story like how I ended up buying one. It's kind of weird, but... So I was at work one day. I worked at an IT company in college. and or not, uh, Yeah, an IT company. And I was literally bored. I was checking my PayPal. And I was like, oh, I forgot that I like did some like freelance work. And I had like some money in my PayPal. Um, so I checked and I had like $500 in there. I'm like, huh, I should get something cool. So, <laughs> so I'm just going through GameStop. I'm like, what the fuck can I buy? Um, they got you. And of course, the genius in me said, I should buy a Wii U. This is in like 20... 20- 13 no 2014 the summer of 2014 and they had a cool legend of zelda special edition version with like uh on the the stooping fucking fablet fat tablet uh you had like the the <laughs> crest the zelda crest on it um and it came with a copy of wind waker hd pre-installed with their with an ebook version of hyrule historia which is um like a zelda lore type of book so i was like for 300 bucks that's cool. I'll buy it. So I bought it. Um, I really didn't play it too much. What's uh, like it? it what's it? Also, kind of sucks because I invested like so much uh, into it. Like I bought like a bunch of controllers for it. Um, I started buying games for it, and I'm like, this is pretty cool. But then I realized like how just like how much I didn't play it. I guess I got like a decent amount of utility out of it. I would say that I've gotten like three hundred dollars plus the games that I spent worth of entertainment from it. Um, Definitely not even close to how much value I've gotten from my 3DS, my GameCube, um, and things like that. But um, I really enjoyed playing games on there. Like Hyrule Warriors was really cool. You mentioned Wind Waker HD was really good. Um, I had Mario Kart 8 as well. So I got a decent selection of games that were like pretty good. But it just... It, the, the, the tablet integration of how it would work with different games just felt very forced. And it wasn't enjoyable. Like Pikmin, for example. I would like to... I want to give a shout-out to Pikmin because I really love those games, especially on a GameCube, Pikmin 1 and 2. Pikmin 3 was something that was available on the Wii U, and I bought it on sale or some shit. I don't remember. Um, but you had to play the game with the the, the tablet, I think. I, I don't remember how you would be able to play it without it. Um, but it sucks because I wanted to be able to just like play it on a controller like I did on a GameCube, but it just felt like a very different experience you're like mm-hmm. i was at a disadvantage if i wasn't playing with a tablet mm-hmm. um and it just felt like the experience was so forced that it wasn't um it wasn't organic and i think at the time between like 2012 2013 2014 when like ipads had really taken off and they're like getting really popular so i could see why nintendo was like let's create a wholesome experience where people can actually enjoy playing on a tablet but then also have like the wireless integration of controllers and like being able to play on a Wii boat still from the Wii, the really successful Wii. But it didn't really work out for like a combination of those reasons. Yep. Um, and I would say that the Nintendo Switch is 100% the Wii U done right. Um, 
I, I don't know. Do you want to say anything on a Wii U before you transition away from And you mentioned it perfectly. iPads, tablets, everything came out at the same time. And then you have this toy version of the amazing iPad when mobile games and apps came so popular. Why go with this toy, crappy plastic version when you can go with the high-tech, metal, beautiful iPad version? It, it just didn't make any sense at that time. So uh, one of Nintendo's biggest flops... I do want to add, though, um, you make a really good point, Dad, that there's the technology was clearly there to create a much better product. And obviously, Nintendo wants to be in a price range where they are affordable and they can hit the price point that's like, I am okay paying this money to buy it. At the time, like the tablet specs were extremely disappointing. I think it was only like a 480 or 720p screen on the tablet. Like I remember there was a, the, on the press release, somebody actually saw a picture of the, of the tablet and like counted the pixels. It's mm-hmm. insane. Um, but at the time, like when you have the Wii U, which at the sa- at the time was like putting out like 720p, some uh, 1080p. I don't remember. It just like was so behind uh, what the uh, Xbox 360 and PS3 were already putting out 1080p. That when you had like really gorgeous, really well made games on a PS4 and Xbox One, like why would you get a Wii U if you're like literally just trying to play Mario Kart 8? If you're just trying to play like Splatoon was a cool title or like everything else that was like noteworthy just seemed like a waste of money when you could get way more value out of a ps4 for 200 dollars instead of dropping to 300 dollars for a week mm-hmm. so definitely so that yeah. brings us to today uh sort of march 3rd 2017 it came out with the nintendo switch um it brought oh. handheld to a console world as well you personally own a i own a switch Switch, so i'm a happy owner of a switch go ahead tell me what is your experience like with a switch what is my experience like with the switch all right this is a dope story so at the time that this was announced it was 2016 at e3 i believe or maybe even maybe even 2015 e3 um but we only knew it online as the nx we just knew that Nintendo was like, we're coming with a new console. Mm-hmm. We're so sorry. <laughs> like, that was kind of the vibe that we got. It leaked. Um, Somebody leaked it, I think. And it, it got huge, pre- like, huge press release for some leaked image or something like that. I don't remember it getting leaked, but I would, I would believe it 100% mm-hmm. that it did. Um, so when they, when they announced the Switch, um, I remember seeing the trailer of like somebody playing a game... Uh, at, on their couch, and I was sliding the controllers onto the Switch, and then picking it up, and then going, and I'm playing with their friends, and I'm being on a plane, and they're like fucking at like a barbecue or some shit, and then like the next thing you know, you have like like 16 Japanese looking dudes like playing on a Switch in a tournament <laughs> arena, placed like on Splatoon, and that was the trailer that they played at the at E3 before the Switch like, was actually launched. I think it was E3. I don't remember exactly. I could be making that up. But I remember that th- when the trailer launched, people like blew up and they're like, what the fuck is this? And they, at the time, I think that there was a lot of mixed reactions, but like people wanted to believe that this was going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, we also knew that a Zelda title had been in the works for quite a long time, but we didn't know exactly when it was going to be out. So just building up all the hype of like <laughs> the Switch and, and Zelda being the... the um, the launch title yeah. was huge. So I was like super on the fence about buying this console. Not because I didn't want it, but just because I was like in a really financially tight spot in my life. So I was like, I really shouldn't drop the $300 for this. I don't think it'll be worth it. And I can always get one later. Um, I should learn how to be patient, like whatever. But then a couple of my friends really wanted this on release. Like they really, really wanted it. So we actually got in line uh, at, leading up to midnight on March 2nd, at a Best Buy where it was freezing, because we're in Illinois, so it was, like, still cold in March, which sucks. Um, and we waited for about, like, two hours. Surprisingly, the line was that, wasn't that long. I think that just being in a small town in Illinois, it was champagne. Um, and having been in a position where, like, people were just kind of mixed about whether the Switch was going to be good or not, mm-hmm. um, there wasn't as much hype as in Champagne as it would have been, like, maybe in Chicago or something. Oh, definitely, yeah. But we got in line, we got our copies of the Switch, um, and we got our copies of Breath of the Wild, and wow. Like, I was, I was blown away. I was like, this is 
so dope. I had never had a gaming experience like Zelda Breath of the Wild, um, where I actually enjoyed the open world setting like as immersely as this. Like, like Wind Waker was pretty cool. Um, I love that game. It's still one of my favorites. Uh, Super Mario Sunshine, another really good open world game. I love that game too. But like, what you got from Breath of the Wild is really cool. And just, and like, I can't express enough like how dope it was to be able to play a full fledged console style game at my desk on my second monitor or at the TV in my living room or in my fucking bed before class. Like laying there and being able to play that kind of game was so dope. And then another really big thing that Nintendo actually did with the Switch is that they opened up. They, ma- they didn't make it so games had to get Nintendo licensing to get, like, published. They made it so indie developers could just, like, throw a game on there. Mm-hmm. Which is huge, because then you have really cool games, like Stardew Valley is, like, an amazing title that is only $15, and you can get a really good gaming experience on your Switch that is more than capable of running this, like, 8 bit styled game. Yeah. And you can continue seeing, like, small indie developers putting out, like, really awesome titles um, for the Switch, because they know how cool it is to be able to play that kind of stuff on the big screen of your living room or like on your way to the doctor's appointment, your doctor's appointment or some shit. Um, they're just like so many really cool opportunities to take advantage of with the switch that like, yeah, they only sold like 10 million, um, consoles between March, 2017 and today, which is fucking January and end of January, uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. But, um, I'm pretty confident, (coughs) excuse me, that, the Switch is going to go way up in sales this year because I know so many of my friends, and maybe this is just like my group, uh, group, uh, friend group, so I could be like totally skewed in my opinion, but so many people I know are just like really on the fence about buying the Switch and they respect it to be like a really good console, but there aren't enough major titles on it. They're waiting for that one, maybe two games to push them over the fence. Yeah, Zelda's awesome and it, was, it, got, it got Game of the Year. Yeah, Super Mario Odyssey and Splatoon are like really fucking awesome titles as well, but they're waiting for like... If, if I I think that like a Metroid Prime title r- announcement this year, a Pokemon RPG mm-hmm. title announcement this year, um, seeing something like an Animal Crossing or a Star Fox, these are all things that I talked to my buddy Sal about. He was featured in a previous episode, and we think that those kinds of announcements will really push the Switch into a really mm-hmm. good place to where they they are dominant in the market again. Yeah. Um, but. I, I I have really high hopes for the Switch. I'm going to continue investing in it. I want to see really good games that I want to play um, or that look cool. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to feel bad putting $10 or $15 down. As opposed to, like for, like, for example, with the Wii U, I dropped $60 for Hyrule Warriors, which is a decent game, but, you know, I probably didn't get $60 of value out of playing that game. Um, so yeah. I think that we're approaching a point where, like, the Switch will soon be seen for what it's worth but i do think that a big flaw with the switch is just the fact that like the, the hardware just isn't necessarily in a in its best place i know that the 300 hundred dollar price point is something that's important to nintendo so like it's affordable but like the plastic casing just like the natural scratching you're going to get from putting it in and out of the dock um the really expensive joy cons which are like 80 dollars a pair but are like really small and like not necessarily fragile um just little things like that in terms of like the quality of the hardware um, might suck so mm-hmm. uh, personally i kind of hope that they'll release like a, a like a nicer more expensive version of the switch that'll like capable of whole, playing the games but maybe it'll be made of like aluminum or something or maybe uh it'll just be nicer and like have a stronger processor i don't know um yeah. but yeah i i have a lot of thoughts on the switch <laughs> i just think that like mm-hmm. a lot of people need to believe the way i do <laughs> look they people had got so burned on the wii u that people are afraid that's true for yeah. the nintendo switch not only that, not many gigantic big name games are on the Switch yet, right? Yes. Yeah. You know of a couple. Odyssey, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. I guess they have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and then Splatoon 2. But other than that, there are like small little games here or there that you could play also on the PC. You know, the indie title games you could play on the PC. That's true. Um, what is Nintendo creating? And that's what I'm waiting for. Yes. I oh, was... Xenoblade Chronicles as well. That's also like a, that was also really, well. That's coming out. Yeah. Or it's, no, it's out. already out, okay. but I, it, it was, it was really popular, but go ahead, go ahead. Right. That's what I'm waiting for. Like I need a couple more games that I may actually purchase. I know I'm probably only going to play two or three for a long period of time, but I mean, ever since the Wii I guess they come out with a new game every five to six, five 
maybe five, six years, right? You mean a new console? New console, sorry. New console every five, six years. I want this to last me five, six years. Yeah. I want the games to last me five, six years. I don't want one game that I can only play or two games here or there that I can play one year and I'm done, right? Yeah. So that's what I'm waiting for. And I definitely want Nintendo. And the reason why is because every other console, unless they come out with a new one for like PlayStation or Xbox, you can play a lot of the games on the computer. Whereas Nintendo, you have these good classic name games, Legend of Zelda, Super Mario, that you can't really get on the computer. You, they don't port into the computer. They don't create yeah. desktop versions of this game. So, mm-hmm. um, so Nintendo is one of the consoles that people should actually take or take a look at or invest in because it's completely different from what you normally do if you're a PC gamer. Um, but yeah, I mean, I th- go, go ahead, ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> my bad. My bad. That's my no, no, no. Go ahead. I, my, I finished my thought there. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, I think you brought up a really good point, Dan. Um, you, you touched on how PC gaming is a kind of really big. That's kind of like what you, I think you were implying. And mm-hmm. also this effect that like, Nintendo's offering a very unique experience that you wouldn't necessarily be able to replicate on a PC. That's like an amazing point because I think that something that the Switch does really well is that it kind of addresses the fact that like, you know, yeah, the game's going to be available on PC, but why don't you like take that? P- like you can play it on your computer um, since PC gaming is like really big with the explosion of esports and then just the like the um, the <laughs> encouragement of like, not the encouragement. Like, there's just the thought process of like, why should, would I invest in a console when I could probably buy a PC version of the game and just get like a really nice gaming computer that will last me longer, that'll probably withstand the test of time, as opposed to getting a console that I might just get, you know, um, outdated at some point. Um, I mean, PCs do as well, but like, I just feel like w- when you think about the general, a- and obviously I haven't done the research on this, so maybe I'm completely wrong, but my intuition just tells me that. Between gamers that play on like the Xbox One and the PS4, there is an overlap with those gamers, PC gamers, mm-hmm. playing the similar titles. Whereas like Switch owners will get access to like really cool titles that are only exclusive on Nintendo, but then we'll have like some of the bigger uh, indie games. So there's like there's less of an overlap of the game library that you have being a PC gamer and a Switch gamer versus being like an Xbox slash PlayStation gamer and PC gamer in terms of like what titles are available. So like what you brought up, I think kind of suggests that uh, the unique experience that you get from playing on a Switch is different enough to where like you can be part of both worlds. Whereas um, console gamers, you usually like stick to just playing games on a console and you know pc gamers will probably just get like those really cool console titles on the pc right. um i think a really good example of that is monster hunter world we haven't seen that game uh on a pc yet i know that's supposed to come out all to 2018 let's go baby Woo! yeah okay no, i'm so hyped for that game <laughs> i'm really excited for that game too um I'm, i just really want an mmo to play with my friends again i need a reason like stick like way too much time uh, in like being online with my friends but anyway um yeah and but then like the P- the console version came up much sooner. I my gut just tells me that way more people are going to be buying it and playing it on the PC if they really want the game enough. Then they'll have to buy the console and then buy and then buy the game. But like the PC experience of being online with your friends with like your cool gaming peripherals, that's something you get on PC only. And I think that like that's something that Nintendo kind of addresses. Where like I can't play Breath of the Wild or Xenoblade Chronicles on PC. But, like, that really cool indie game on PC, I could t- probably get on my Switch, like, Rocket League. I guess it's not a really indie game, but, like, Stardew Valley. <laughs> but then, mm-hmm. like, that, the experience of playing Xenoblade is different from the experience of me playing, like, Overwatch or League. Um, so I, I, I hope I'm making my point clear. I think yes, it's kind of confusing. Definitely. And obviously, there's a lot of intuition, just, like, my gut feeling that's speaking for that. So um, if there are, like, opposing opinions, guys, I'd love to hear what you think. Dan, what, do you think that, like, my argument's kind of like, flawed? Or, like, what are your thoughts on, like, that, like, market kind of analysis no that's exactly what i was thinking that's the that's the only reason i would ever get a a nintendo i mean there are very few games on the ps4 the xbox that actually don't cross over to the pc um 
or games that I would in personally enjoy. And one of the mm-hmm. one that does come to mind is like Kingdom Hearts three, and who knows when that's ever going to come out, or if you, it's even ever going to come out, <laughs> or if I even never want to. <laughs> so yeah. I mean. There has to be more games, and like you have Call of Duty, you can probably get on the computer as well. You can the PC. I'm seeing you can. Uh, there's a lot here. Or there Street Fighter. You can get on the PC. So um, definitely, I'm looking forward to what Nintendo will come out this next upcoming year, and I might actually invest in one. Um, Did you see the Nintendo Labo or Labo announcement? Yeah, that was weird. It's fucking insane. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, I don't want to talk too much about it because like this trailer kind of speaks for itself. Um, but Nintendo is launching an initiative where you can integrate your Nintendo Switch, the components of it, including like the controllers and console itself, um, into cardboard setups to create a really, really, really unique gaming experience that uh, like you don't really see. It is uh, like a lot of people say that's tailored for to kids. I think that's like totally fair to say if um if you think about like who would get the most value out of it. Personally, I'm really excited for it, but um I don't know, Dan, what what were your thoughts? You're uh, paying you eighty dollars for a piece of cardboard that you can kind Is of that shape a piece into of cardboard. Okay, you can shape into different I will buy you yeah. some cardboard right now. Five bucks. You can make your own little makeshift cardboard. It's genius. From Nintendo, if people actually buy it, because they're probably only paying, they, they, their manufacturing costs must be absolutely so low <laughs> for this car piece of cardboard. You stamp a Nintendo thing on on a piece of cardboard and say, "Hey, here, buy this for eighty dollars. Let's go." It comes with the <laughs> software, though, so I guess that there's that. But I, I agree. It is weird paying so much for cardboard. Mm-hmm. Personally, I am going to invest in it because I believe in Nintendo and I'll try it. Um, I, it's also worth saying that I've never owned like a Xbox or a PlayStation of any kind. At some point, I would like to. Um, but I've always been like a Nintendo guy myself. So um, maybe we'll do a video about like, Nintendo Labo when, <laughs> when it comes out and I get it. I think that'd be cool. But yeah. <laughs> Overall, um, out of all the consoles, we was the number one seller of the consoles. NES, the original NES, was the second. Super Nintendo NES, uh, so SNES, was the third. Nintendo 64, fourth. GameCube, fifth. Wii U, sixth. And now we have the Nintendo Switch. Now, before you guys even say anything, we know Nintendo Switch will get popular because, first off, Wii U, first year sales, was 3.9 million units. 3.9. That's um, it. Nintendo Wii was 13.7, which was mm-hmm. solid. Um, we don't have, I don't have too many for the other um, consoles. Nintendo 64 may have been around 5.8. These are things that I found online. The Switch hasn't even gone through its full year yet, and it's already at 10 million. So think about it right there at a price point of $300 with amazing games so far. I definitely expect it to um, go further, and um, I mean, the Legend of Zelda. They took what ten years before they came out with another. Before they came out this one, it oh, was really. I think Twilight Princess was the last one that came out. No, Skyward Sword. Oh, Skyward Sword. I am totally Skyward wrong. S- Woo. Okay. Um, Five years, maybe. Okay, so at the I'm I'm reading straight off of Wikipedia at the 2014 uh, E3. Onama said that he planned to reform Dungeons and Puzzles, two of the series' major gameplay elements, uh, in the new Zelda game that they kind of like really uh, talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, the game was built and demonstrated with touchscreen features for the Wii U, but the developers found that looking away from the main screen distracted the game. Um, so, I mean, there is like a Wii U version and and a Switch version of the game, mm. but um, I, I would I want to say that this game took like. I don't know. It's kind of hard to find like a concrete number. I mean, maybe I'm just boosted and I missed it. Mm-hmm. Oh, four years to develop. I found it. Um, okay. they, had o- they had over 300 developers and four years to develop, according to an article by Nintendo Today. I'll link it just so that you guys can like, get some context and see what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, four years, man. Four years. I guess not as long as like Final Fantasy 15 or uh, what's it called? Uh, Kingdom Hearts, but you know, still a pretty long time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Legend of Zelda is continuously going to be great. 
Um, but overall, I mean, these are the things. What are your thoughts on this progression? Kind of, I guess we'll we'll just go with the top and the bottom most of the time. What made you think the Wii actually was the most popular? Why did it become that popular? And what what happened with like? Uh, so I think that you... before the world of like VR gaming, it just got really cool to. It, it was really cool to see that you could actually get up from your seat and play a game that required you to be interactive instead of just sitting down with your controller, which is what console gaming looked like for 20 years up until that point, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm kind of the difference between the NES being uh, launched at, uh, in 1983 to the Wii being launched in uh, 2006. Mm -hmm. So um, at that time, gaming was either restricted to being at your computer or being sitting on your couch with a TV and some like a box plugged into to it right yeah. um so being able to get up and like do stuff and like play a game where you had to actually interact with your screen and your controller was huge i think a really big cool thing about skyward sword was that like it was really important that you felt like you were the hero um and that's always been a really important element of zelda games which is why you never hear link talk um because your voice is the hero's voice you your actions are the hero's actions and holding the wiimote where you literally like swing up towards this corner of the screen was swing link sword up to the screen like you were the hero and i think that just thinking about what that meant and how that transformed uh the way we play games now mm -hmm. um is huge uh so that's probably why i think that we were successful because like you got to see so that gaming experience in your living room for really like a pretty affordable cost at the time given like how many games are available and um how long it lasted um and I think that the Xbox 360 and PS3 were also great consoles. I know that there were like a lot of really cool games at the time that those were released, especially being the first consoles, I think, to hit 1080p, like full HD. Um, but those are still like on your couch uh, mm -hmm. with a controller games. And I know that like Xbox had the thing where like they had like a stupid bar and like you could dance or like Just Dance got really big. I think PlayStation had that like weird like microphone looking thing with like a little like Connect? light up Wait, white no, ball yeah xbox Connect. wait what oh, whatever yeah you know what i'm talking about like they they kind of introduced their own ways like interaction yep but the Wii did so well yep. um so yeah i mean when it comes to the wii uh when it comes to nintendo nintendo i think their philosophy actually looking through the years is so different from the actual mainstream right i guess you can consider nintendo to be the hip uh, not even not not hipster the I don't even know. They're, they're just different from Sony, from uh, Microsoft. They innovate differently, whereas Microsoft and Sony kind of go to this high-tech, high-powered, best graphics, most powerful system you can ever think of, whereas Nintendo goes like, all right, well, you can play on this TV, but you can play with this huge, with this amazing motion detector system and they just did things differently their controllers mm -hmm. were different their graphics were different their games were different their um, style of play was different there are so many differences and they that's that's what makes nintendo great as well it's not only because they're innovation but they don't follow what everyone else wants they try and do something different to create a different gaming experience for the consumers so <clears throat> you were about to say something as well oh no no i was just breathing <laughs> <laughs> I, I was i was waiting for you to finish <laughs> my bed <laughs> all good <laughs> but yeah that's that's one thing the wii created this new and innovative technology not even technology just new system where like johnny said you can play differently you can play with your family and that's one big thing i think Parents at that time probably considered this more productive than sitting on a couch and playing in the controller. Maybe that's one of the things. It's the perception of the console as well. Um, hey, mom, look, I can exercise and play sports on this as well. Yeah. You know, I can, I can, I won't just be sitting down. There's not action. There's not like gut and blood and everything i'm playing this tennis with you i can play with you mom blah 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 blah. you know yeah. um so it may have been very popular in the u.s there as well um and however 
one big thing is I think from what I read a little bit online, the Wii was actually not a very popular system for developers and that's because Nintendo had so many restrictions on who is allowed to put the games. They needed the seal of approval. They needed people to developers and companies to actually like sign off and say, hey, Nintendo, this is the game. We want to make this. Can you give us a seal of approval? I think, oh, man, there's one little thing where uh, I don't remember if it's the GameCube or the Wii. You could all, a developer can only create five games per year on the or on this console outside of Nintendo. I didn't know that. That's crazy. Uh, there's something like that. I don't remember. Don't quote me on that. Check it up yourselves. Um, but Nintendo had so many restrictions. Even they started off with less. They became. They got more. Maybe because of the titles that people came out with on the Nintendo, that they just didn't. They didn't like it. They wanted to be Nintendo. They didn't want to be other developers as well. I'm glad yeah. they came out with that with the Switch and stopped their almost monopoly on Nintendo. <laughs> so, I mean, it's yeah. not a monopoly, but they're control- where like they let indie devs come yes. in so they could like have a larger game library. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the big problem. Like, we didn't talk a lot about it at all. Mm-hmm. Um, the 3DS launch was fucking Street Fighter Four, and like. I mean that's cool, but most people play on the 3DS like Pokemon and Mario games and shit. Like, mm-hmm. like just mm-hmm. such a limited library on the 3DS at the time when it was released was so bad that it made it so people really didn't want to pick up the console then. So they had to like drop the price and then like put push more games out and stuff like that. But eventually, it became like one of the better selling handheld consoles of all time. Yep. Um, something I remember, uh, I was in like seventh or eighth grade at the time. This was like 2007 or 2008. Um, at my high school. Uh, which had like a seventh and eighth grade program. Um, there was a, like a really cool little recording studio in there, um, where like you could go in and just like record stuff. Um, so I actually like thinking back on it, I really got into podcasting back then when I was like kind of messing around with stuff um, and learning how to use like recording equipment and things like that. Which is kind of funny because like I still think DJ quality, uh, DJ talks quality for me from my end personally, like technology wise, just took way too long to get to a point that was good, <laughs> um, or like at least like okay. Uh, tolerable but i remember that in one of my recordings that we were talking specifically about video games i was like really enthusiastic about the wii i was hating on xbox 360 and a ps3 and i was mm-hmm. telling like my peers like man the wii could beat the xbox wirelessly i i said something along those lines like it could beat it wirelessly <laughs> and and then like the senior kid that was kind of like more um in charge of like the recording studio at the time um i was like kind of learning from him he was listening to my recording and he he liked that like we had a pretty cool like conversation going and he heard that part and he's like what no way the xbox 360 is way better and he was like talking about like how the wii had like a very limited number of consoles that when's the next mario kart game ever going to come out when's the next like super mario game or zelda game mm-hmm. ever going to come out like xbox 360 just puts out so many more games and there's a diverse like a uh, library of titles that you play um and it's just funny now like looking back like that the wii like kind of outdid them in terms of like the gaming experience and mm-hmm. like the, it was like the dominant console at the time but like there was a lot of controversy and th- i still think back to that conversation i had with that guy i wish i remembered his name he's a really nice guy um <laughs> but like I, I i actually like just now tried to like quickly search to see if that recording is up i feel like it's not because like chicago the schools and like their websites i'm sure that they like are cutting they're just trying to cut budgets everywhere so if i ever find that recording i'd love to like share it yeah. just to like hear like what my thoughts were as like when i was like <laughs> that much like 10 12 years ago whatever right mm-hmm. that'd be cool but um yeah i i i have very fond memories of we i think it was an amazing console mm-hmm. and i well you know dan i think it'd be really cool if like we and maybe come march or come e3 if we look back on the switch and like we kind of reviewed what we thought of it and like our thoughts on the console like where it might go in the future um and see like just the, kind of the measure its growth and talk about that like maybe during that one year anniversary of the switch or like maybe when we hear like other big announcements and like if sales go up or something right that'd yep. be really cool to maybe discuss definitely definitely um but uh, uh, on that same <coughs> note actually similar nintendo restricting everything for the n64 um when everyone else was during the, the disc times so if you saw uh playstation had the disc where you can put it in as the yeah. game mm-hmm. nintendo did cartridges 
Everyone else did discs. GameCube, they had the smaller disc, the mini yeah. disc. Everyone else did the regular size disc. Developers had such a hard time um, actually creating for cartridges as well as the GameCube's uh, mini disc um, because they're, they're limited in what they can actually put in. The memory, the sounds, the graphics, everything that they needed could not be done as well. Uh, I, I'm not 100% sure if this is true, but Final Fantasy VII was apparently supposed to be on Nintendo as well, but they couldn't because of the cartridges. They couldn't mm -hmm. access what they wanted to access, so they went to the PlayStation. So just mull over that a little bit, viewers. Think about that. You could have had Final Fantasy potentially on the Switch as well. Or, I mean, sorry, the Nintendo, uh, the N64. Um, mm -hmm. But there, there's so many. That's, I think, what holds back Nintendo. But at the same time, I also think that enhances who they are as well, right? They are their own creators of not only games, but consoles and titles and characters that... The only thing that you think of when you think Nintendo is like these big popular characters, Mario, uh, you know, Link. Um, man, I'm blanking on every single other one, but <laughs> holy! <laughs> but you think big name characters like this, you know, Samus, all of that. That's Nintendo for you, right? Mm -hmm. That is Nintendo for you. At the end of the day, no matter what it is, Nintendo will create some amazing titles of their characters and try to innovate new and improved gaming experiences for you yeah do you have any last thoughts on like maybe <clears throat> things that uh maybe what you think of the future for nintendo or like why you'll continue to buy their games or like why you won't um i'm just waiting for some more titles to pop up for the switch and i'm gonna probably get one as well hell yeah i think it's super cool seeing the little slide on controller things on the side i, I fucking love it man um, I'm excited. Something that you could consider, and I recommend this to the viewers as well, um, is to subscribe to the Nintendo channel. And they're not selling out. They didn't pay me for this shit. I'm just saying you could totally subscribe to the YouTube channel because they've been releasing a lot of Nintendo Switch game trailers lately. Mm -hmm. And these are all indie games. None of these are like really big title games. Uh... But it's really cool because like, you know, going through your feed, maybe like you'll see two or three a week. Of just new games dropping mm -hmm. that are making their way to the Switch that like they took the time to make a fucking trailer for you to watch on YouTube and they're like one, two, three minute trailers of like what gameplay looks like or what the soundtrack sounds like, or, like what the story is about. Um and you'll have like some JRPG style games, you have some like eight bit style games and things like that. So um I think it'd be really cool if you want to explore what options uh or like what the potential library of games look like for the Switch if you want to just like see like what some of the cheaper options were because Obviously, the AAA titles will have like such big announcements you probably won't miss them. So, yep. Um, yep. I think these trailers are a really good way to hear about like really small titles that haven't come out yet. Um, but, uh, yeah. I mean, I know a lot of my friends are in the same boat as you, Dan. Just like they're they're waiting for that one push, like breaking point title that's like, all right, fine, I'll buy it. You mm -hmm. know, uh, there's that game, and then there's the rest of these games. All right, fine, I'm sold. So, yep. Yeah. I mean, on that note, I guess. Uh... I'm glad everyone could join in, watch this little huge rant about Nintendo's consoles, <laughs> and we didn't even get to everything that we wanted to say about it, probably, but um, overall, keep doing what you're doing, Nintendo. That's all I gotta <laughs> say. Keep doing what you're doing. Know what we use, and uh, just give me fucking Super Mario Sunshine on the Switch. I would, like, fucking wet myself if they put, like, an HD version of Super Mario Sunshine on the Switch. Or, or like, Thousand Year Door would be dope. If they brought Wind Waker HD from the fucking Wii U to the Switch. Holy shit. I would... Does any of, like, the top-selling GameCube games put that shit on the Switch? You'll make me a very happy boy. There you go. You heard <laughs> it right there. Let us know what your favorite console was, what you liked about Nintendo, what your favorite games were on Nintendo, what your thoughts are on the Switch. Whatever you have about Nintendo, let us know in the comment section below. Or if you're listening to us on Google Play slash uh, Wooshka slash uh, fuck, what was the other one that we have? <laughs> Stitcher. Uh, Stitcher. Stitcher. If you're listening to us anywhere else, email us what your thoughts are. We would like honestly love to hear them. Um,
But with that, we're signing off. Thanks for listening and tuning in, and you'll hear from us next week.